Am I being unreasonable for quote, going nuclear and making my husband stay at a hotel? We'll try and keep it short. I suffer from migraines and type 1 diabetes. We were advised not to get pregnant due to my lack of control of blood sugars, but it happened. And it sucks. Although I've been monitoring it so much better and been doing much better. One, I constantly ask my husband to turn the sleeves of his tops the right way in. He wears two to three tops a day. If he goes to the gym, it's three. Two if he's going out, which nine out of 10 times he does. And he just doesn't. So I'm ironing 10 tops a week minimum and it just gets annoying to constantly be turning in the sleeves. Two, I ask him once a week to unload the dishwasher and get rid of the rubbish. I mean, I do it the rest of the time. Rubbish wasn't emptied and when I opened the cupboard, a few plates fell out. One fell on me, which hurts more than it sounds like. Three, I had a migraine and I asked him to keep the lights off and I asked him to keep it quiet and he insisted on A, playing loud music and B, turning on the lights. I just lost it. I'm so uncomfortable and it feels like I asked the minimum. So I told him I wouldn't be having two children and I asked him to leave. He wouldn't, so I texted my brothers and they came and made him leave. He's texting me, I since calmed down and he's saying I'm the butthole because I overreacted and went nuclear. And I can't do that when I have the baby. He's insisting that I apologize? Am I being unreasonable? OP, I really don't want to be rude when I'm saying this because, you know, obviously you're going through a really hard time. Uh, you have a medical condition that's serious and you have a baby on the way and your husband's acting like an immature child. It's not like you're asking the world of him. Like, he should be picking up all the time you're pregnant and sick. Come on, man. Like, this guy is really the jerk. Like, you can't even make the house a nice space for your pregnant wife, let alone a sick and pregnant wife. Like, this pregnancy could be very serious for her and you're just stressing her out? And you think you're gonna raise a baby with this girl when you can't even put in the bare minimum? Come on, like, there's no way you should have a child. OP, I seriously don't know what you see in this man and why are you cleaning up after him? I know I might sound a little bit harsh, but this girl's life is really in danger. If he doesn't help her try and make this the easiest pregnancy possible, then something might happen. And that's just not okay, man. Just, just dump him, find somebody better, get some good support in your life. OP, I know I'm just a YouTuber and I have no right poking my nose in your relationship, but I'm glad you're taking the steps to leave. Leave this man. Please run. Will I be unreasonable for not inviting my poly friends partners to my wedding? I'm getting married in September. My husband Mike and I are doing a big wedding for 250 guests. I've always dreamed of a storybook wedding. I asked my friend Marissa to be my maid of honor and she happily agreed. She's been a huge help to me in every step of planning the wedding. Marissa is in a poly relationship and she has three partners, Greg, Brandon, and Ace. She's been with Greg for five years and he was the first partner that she had. They added Brandon and Ace over the course of their relationship with Ace being the newest member. They all date each other and seem to be happy. I don't really get it if I'm being honest, but it's none of my business. However, the issue came into play when my husband Mike pulled me aside and said that while he loves Marissa, he didn't really feel like spending the wedding explaining her love life to his family. Which I understand. They are very conservative and hardly accept LGBTQ people as it is, let alone any LGBTQ poly set. I had already reserved four spots of Marissa's party, but my husband suggested that he invite a few coworkers to take their partner's spot, and Marissa could come alone. I didn't want to ruin his big day, so I agreed reluctantly. I know I should have told Marissa from the get-go, but I couldn't bring myself to do it. So when the invites came out, she called me immediately and asked why she didn't get a plus invite for three. I explained to her exactly what I said above and she just said, oh, and hung up. Next thing I know, Brandon is calling me, begging me to reconsider, saying that they promise they won't act like they're in a relationship, but they want to be there for me. Except I can hear Greg in the background telling me to F off and that I'm a jerk and that he doesn't even want to go. I explained to Brandon that I already gave their spots to Mike's coworkers. Brandon says, okay, thank you, and hangs up. Marissa texts me the next day saying that she isn't coming unless they can go. Mike said he can't uninvite his coworkers, so now it's not his problem. I told him that I would add them and pay the cost, and he just said that if I wanted to spend the whole time explaining their relationship to people, then so be it. But he wasn't wasting his time doing it, and would just send people my way. Damn. Our other friends think that I'm being unreasonable, but Mike's friends and a few of my non-mutual friends don't think that I am. Just want some more unbiased opinions. Edit. I am being unreasonable. That's for sure. I followed a lot of the advice in this post and asked Mike what he thinks in the morning. He said to talk to Marissa first and see what she wants and we'll make it work. I also had him read over the post himself, and he said that a lot of the comments opened his eyes on how he himself was coming off. So we both decided to call Marissa together and beg for forgiveness. We called her and she was happy to talk. We explained our side of things, but acknowledged that it was a massive screw up and could have been handled so much better. 
We invited her and her partners, obviously, and said that we would be happy to do whatever it takes to have them forgive us. She asked her partners about it, and Brandon and Greg both agreed that they would prefer just to split the setup. So, Greg and Marissa would be a couple for the wedding, and Brandon and Ace would be a couple. They would, however, need to talk to Ace first, and they were at work, and that they would have to get back to me. So, that's where we're currently stand. Edit 2. I never told Marissa that I was inviting her partners. I just had a list of invites with Mike. I'm still the jerk, but wanted to explain that. Last edit. Ace got out of work a few hours ago, and we all got on speakerphone and had a long conversation with the post pulled up. The crew was happy to be defended, but I think people went a little harder than they would have. Even Greg. He actually laughed at me calling him self-absorbed because he is lol. Anyway, we're all good. They're coming. They gave permission to tell Mike's parents. We called them after they understood, but said that don't let Nani know or she'll be asking questions all night. It's been a huge relief, and I think that we learned how to communicate better as a couple. I'm glad that OP was able to realize that she was being unreasonable. I mean, yeah, it is your wedding, and you can do whatever you want, but it sounds like that they're your friends, and it would be kind of insulting to not be invited to your friend's wedding just because of your sexual orientation. In the end, I'm glad that everything was able to work out, and that no friendships or relationships were ruined in the making. Am I being unreasonable for calling my daughter a selfish, insecure little brat? My 16-year-old daughter and I have gotten into a massive fight. My daughter has always been a picky eater, and we've always done our best to accommodate her, feeding her before weddings, parties, etc. The problem lies with my husband's upcoming birthday. He's turning 50. The restaurant he picked is very special to us. This is where we first met as children for a business deal our parents had and then we became best friends. When he asked me out in the very restaurant and our first date was here, he proposed to me and this is who catered our wedding. I told him I was pregnant and we held our daughter's first birthday here. Unfortunately, we can't go there a lot as we had to move for his job but basically all the major events of our lives were held there. So for my husband's birthday, to celebrate him turning half a century old, we wanted to go there. We once took our daughter there when she was 10 but she hated it. And now that she's 16, I thought she would have matured enough and it's not like I'm forcing her to eat. She has the option of eating at home and I've told her many times that the restaurant does have food she likes but she claims it smells bad. It is a seafood restaurant, but we always sit outside at our usual table, so I don't understand that. She says that we're being selfish, but I told her it's not about her, it's not her day. In anger, she's refused to talk to us, and she's not doing her usual chores, and she's refusing to eat. My husband is heartbroken, and he thinks it's his fault and wants to cancel the whole thing, but I think it'll just fuel her brattiness. Today, my husband had to work late, so it was just my daughter and me. When I called for my daughter to come eat, she looked at the food and then took the plate and dumped it in the bin. I was shocked. Food is valuable and she didn't have to do that. I snapped at her and called her a selfish, insecure brat. That she's not the only one hurting what her father is and she's ruining his birthday. And it's not as if we're asking her to give up a kidney. That if she continues this behavior, we'll never fund her birthday parties ever again. And she said that I'm a terrible mother for saying that. I feel like I went overboard, but she's acting like a brat. Am I being unreasonable? Sorry for the late reply. I posted this and went to sleep. No, my daughter doesn't have anything like autism or food allergies. We tested her when she was 10. We can't leave her at home because this restaurant is across the country from where we're going to meet our family. And according to the country's law, she's not supposed to be home alone for more than a day without parental supervision. We've never had a fight like this and she's usually super chill. I have no idea what's gotten into her. Yeah, OP, this may have been a little bit harsh if she was like 11 or 12. There's no way a 16 year old should be acting like this, like you're not an actual child, just buck up, eat the food. In my opinion OP, this was a much needed reality check. Am I in the wrong for telling a guy to move his crying baby out of a quiet enclosure at the zoo? I visited the zoo today with my family and we were checking out the koalas, who I was especially excited to see. You may not know this, but koalas apparently need over 18 hours of sleep a day to function, or else they get quite unhealthy quite quickly. So any exhibit at the zoo will often come with an expectation that you maintain a certain level of silence while observing them. This zoo today was no exception. You are made to go through two gates, both of which have a signage saying, please be quiet, keep the noise down, silence please. And then the door of the koala house itself that has another sign, please keep the noise levels to a minimum. With all those reminders, I figured that people would get the memo. But as soon as we entered the enclosure, which has a small room and doors with a glass window looking into the koala pen. I spotted a couple in their early 30s with two young kids and a baby. I somewhat apprehensively tried to observe the koalas. They were so cute and my little sister was happy to see them. But then, like clockwork, the baby starts crying. Hardly the baby's fault, it's a baby, they cry. So I gave the dad of the family the benefit of the doubt, thinking that he'd either take the baby out or calm her down. A few moments pass and the baby gets more annoyed and cries louder. The koalas scurry away, hiding in their cubby holes and others wake up from their sleep. I give the dad the look. I feel like everyone knows the look. 
We've either had someone give it to us or we've given it to someone else. I'm not sure I'd ever been on the end of it, but I've definitely received some looks at sometimes. Baby continues to cry. I, being a socially awkward autistic teenager, grapple with the idea that the dad might have missed my giving him the look. So I do the classic, I shake my head and give a little sigh. No change. I throw another look at his way, this time a little bit more firm. But I feel like I overdo it. My eyes are a little bit too intense. Because suddenly the dad is saying in the voice of someone who's just gotten a lecture, well, alright mate, it's just a baby. To which I reply with the gesture towards the sign, silence please. But it's a baby, he says. Well, don't bring a baby in here, I reply, in a whisper. My parents jump on me, thinking I'm out of line, and the couple and their kids give me the filthiest look and leave the enclosure, leaving me feeling very tense. What do we think? I feel like this is very common struggle in a public place where there aren't always members of staff to enforce the rules. We want to pick our battles, of course, but this family bringing their baby spoiled my little sister's magical moment seeing the koalas for the first time. Surely they should have seen the signs and thought, probably best not to bring little Charlie in. Or if they really wanted to see the koalas, the dad should have stayed outside with the baby and the mom and the kids could have went in. Am I being unreasonable here? OP, I don't think you're being unreasonable at all. There's certain places where it should be obvious not to bring little babies around. The parents obviously saw the signs out front and still thought, hmm, this should be a good idea. This is definitely a place where my baby can go. Anyways, OP, you're not in the wrong here. Sometimes we need someone to give us the look. If you've gotten this far in the video, thank you so much for watching. If you really enjoy our content, please like, comment, and subscribe. Peace.